This video is going to be a little bit more personal than some of my other videos. There's no 3D printing project or, or machine that I'm reviewing right now. It's just me talking about an experience that I had recently that I feel like is altering the trajectory of my life in real time. And I want to tell you about it, partially because this is a whole new adventure for me and partially because well, I just don't know what I don't know. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. I hope that you'll stick around and maybe even come and join me on my Discord, where I've got a great community of people who are doing amazing things with 3D printing and helping others do amazing things as well. I hope that you'll join me there. Y you know, it's funny, that phrase that I don't know what I don't know, I feel like that has marked certain milestones in my life. Um, for instance, when I was younger, I wanted to be a teacher, but I thought that you had to have a career and a good life. I felt like being a teacher was a reward for a life well lived. That was until somebody I knew went to school to be a teacher. They just went straight for it and didn't have to go through the, the circuitous route of being a, a professional first. And I didn't know that you could just do that. And so after that, I did that. And I was a teacher and it was great. And I've, I hope you know that I've still got a little bit of that in me. Then there was also my 10 years of being in software development, a career that, well, before I got into, I was doing software development, but just for fun on the side, just like I had always done from way back when I was a kid with my Commodore 64. And then somebody told me, you know that software developers get paid like a lot of money. No, I didn't know that. Why didn't anybody tell me sooner? I got into software development and that was a great career for a while. A few months back, I was at the LA Maker Fair and I had set up my table with all of my printer blocks. I laid them all out and we're just encouraging people to play with them. I left for a minute to get something to eat and when I came back, there was a woman looking at my table and my spread with a look on her face like there was something there that shouldn't have been. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but I just launched into the, the same spiel I'd been launching into all day long. Hey, my name is Joe. These are my printer blocks. I made them, yada, yada, yada. And when I was done, I went into the, you know, getting to know you sort of questions. I, I asked, hey, so what's your name and, and what do you do? And she answered me in a way that I, I remember just taking me off my guard because she said something like, well, this is where it's going to get interesting. <laughs> I mean, what does that even mean? But you know what? She was right. She told me I work in toy design and I'm trying to figure out why you don't work in toy design. I looked at my collection of over 500 designed printer blocks there and I said, what, you think this is enough for a portfolio? And she looked at the table and she looked at me and she went, uh, yeah. And in that moment, I didn't have a good response because I just really wanted to be in toy design all of a sudden. I looked back on all the previous projects I had done and thought, yes, this is what I've been working for. And I thought, how cool would it be to have something that I designed up on store shelves, uh, not printer blocks. I don't, I, I'm not necessarily saying I want to take printer blocks and sell them to a toy manufacturer. That's just a portfolio piece to get my foot in the door. But how cool would that be? And I didn't even know that that was a possibility. And I didn't know that I didn't know it. But there's a problem. Toy design is a creative field and consequently a competitive one. And one that the usual path into toy design is you work contract work for a couple of times, a couple of years maybe. And then after enough contract work, eventually, hopefully you build up your portfolio and you get hired on full time with a company. I'm not a young kid out of college. I've got a family. I'm a father. I, I need to take care of my family. And the idea of being out of work for extended periods of time just doesn't work for that life right now. Overcoming these problems is going to take some creative thinking. And the worst part is I'm, I'm, I'm feeling two different possibilities pulling me in different directions. Ah! Oh, 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 why did it taste like 
Overripe bananas? I was going to say mushy strawberries. Uh, well, well, I think that I'm the possibility that we're less excited about doing, so maybe I should go first. All right, I'll be just over here right. off camera. Catch you later. So option one is I have a go at being a toy design company all by myself. You know, one thing that a decade of making 3D printing related content for YouTube has given me is a library of 3D printers that I could leverage for production. I could use these to make the 3D objects that I would then sell on Etsy or directly on 3dpprofessor.com. But this option is less desirable because it means I gotta wear a lot of hats. And believe me, I don't look good with one, let alone a whole stack of them on top of my head. I'm gonna have to be designer and producer and packager and marketer and shipping and just everything is gonna all come down to me. Not to mention keeping up on YouTube and until and unless this does manage to take off, I'm gonna be doing this all around a full-time job that I still have to keep. And until this does take off and I can go full time at it, I'm still gonna have to grow it to a point where I could hire somebody else because until then, all of it still rests on me by myself. And I'll tell you the truth, I know me. I, I don't know if I could do all of this. My first major purchase would probably be upgrading this space, tearing it all down and building something bigger because this space is tiny. And if I want to add any more 3D printers in here right now, I just don't have room for it. I got to get rid of one before I can add a new one in. And that's a tough decision to make on top of everything else. Future video content, possibly, but a tough decision. So that's all the reasons why this option is the less desirable variant. Huh. Uh, this is normally the part where I'd, I'd fade away and disappear as I just dismiss this option. But you know, the more I think about it, this option really does have some merits to it. I mean, first of all, I do have a bunch of kids that I could exploit. I mean, uh, hire for doing some part-time work like cleaning off the print beds and starting the next one and keeping the production cycle going. Not to mention that there's probably a lot of people here on YouTube that would like to know more about actually using a 3D printer to make money with. And so my experience would, if nothing else, generate some good YouTube content. So I guess I can't entirely dismiss this possibility yet. However, which brings me to option two, which is I find a company to hire me on full time right away, skipping the whole contract work phase and preferably a company that allows for remote work or that just isn't in California, I'd be willing to move my family if it was a solid opportunity in the right place. But that is all a really tall order. And in order to do that, I would need to find a potential employer and knock their socks off with my first impression. So instead of a resume, I came up with a physical portfolio that I could send to a potential employer. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got print -a blocks in it. It's also got some chibi malls to show that I'm good for not just build a block boy toys, but that I can have a range of designs. And it's got a booklet showing other things that I've done as well as instructions for the print -a blocks. During the process of making this, I wanted to demonstrate that I had experience in multiple making technologies, not just 3D printing. So I wanted the insert that was holding everything to be vacuum formed, since that's a technology that's used in the industry quite a lot, especially for packaging. However, I did find a vacuum former at the local college that they would let me play with that was a real one, and I tried to design the box around that. But I discovered that when you have a deep pocket like I'm making for this one, the vacuum former stretches those walls gossamer thin and it doesn't actually hold anything. Uh, which is fair, I could have seen that coming if I'd have thought a little bit about it, but I did learn a lot about vacuum forming in doing this process. So I 3D printed the insert instead, and I think it turned out really good. I sent some of these to the backers of my latest Kickstarter, and I wanted to send one to the woman who got me started on this whole adventure. And then she told me that I probably really shouldn't send these to toy companies because stealing people's ideas without giving them compensation is actually super common in the industry. So I guess I'm not gonna do this. 
Well, that's disappointing, and really I only have this one left, but I don't know, I guess I've got a 3D printing professor gift box. Would anybody want to buy those if I put them up on the Etsy store? Oh, gosh, we're going back to you already. The more I dive into the toy industry and learn about it, the less feasible it seems that I'm going to be able to get into it, especially with this list of demands that I'm trying to satisfy. So in the end, I, I guess maybe the answer... Ah, canned spinach. Ah. Maybe the answer is a little bit of both. Keep poking at the toy industry while I have a go at doing it myself with the 3D printers that I have. Maybe somebody watching knows something that I don't know. Maybe there's some little toy company out in the Midwest that's looking for somebody that can do fabrication but also do a little bit of design and I would just be the perfect fit. Or maybe there's something else that I haven't even considered. I just don't know what I don't know again, but maybe there is still hope for this silly little dream. But until then, I'm gonna reopen my Etsy shop, start using my 3D printers to produce stuff to sell on there, and I'm gonna tell you guys about this adventure so that, well, maybe somebody else can learn from it. I might not get rich from this route, but maybe we can all just get a little bit richer from my experience. Doggone, that was cheesy. But until then, I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.